So in this chapter, we will also learn what are different types of isomers we have, okay? So isomers can be divided into two major categories, right? So isomers can be constitutional isomers or they can be stereoisomers, okay? And we'll look into each and every one in detail. Okay, so first let's go to a simple one. What are constitutional isomers? Okay, so by definition, constitutional isomers are the two compounds, okay, the two compounds, they have the same molecular formula, they have the same molecular formula, but they have different connectivity. So different connectivity of atoms, that's what we're looking at, right? So that there has to be two compounds because we're comparing two different structures here, right? So such as if you see the example, let's say we have an example like this, chlorine, and if you have a chlorine right here. All right. <clears throat> so do they have the same molecular formula, right? So do they have the two compounds? Do they have the same molecular formula? So we have three carbons, all right? So we have C3. Okay, how many hydrogens? We have three plus two plus two. So we have seven hydrogens and one chlorine. Okay, in this case also we have three carbons, seven hydrogens and a chlorine. So they have the same molecular formula, all right? But there are two different structures. There are two different nomenclature, right? So this will be one chloropropane and this will be two chloropropane, if you wanna name those. So there are two different compounds, but the only common thing here is the molecular formula. So these kind of compounds are called as constitutional isomers. So let's find out what are stereoisomers. Right? So stereoisomers, they have the same connectivity. That means they are the same structures. The only difference is the spatial arrangement. Right? So that means they have the same connectivity, but let's say one bond might be up or one might be down. So when you have just up and down difference, those are stereoisomers. All right. So what we'll do now is we'll just look at the general definitions of of enantiomers and diastereomers, and then we'll actually do the examples. Okay, we'll draw some structures, and then we'll find out how do we define, or how do we find out the difference. All right. So enantiomers definitely a new term for you. Okay. Uh, enantiomers basically means they're non-superimposable mirror images of each other. Right. So if you have a structure, and then you have another structure. Okay. And if you put a mirror, and if they look like a mirror images of each other, then those are called enantiomers, okay? Now again, we don't really use these terms anymore, but these are mostly for, for traditional purposes. So if you know where the name coming from, right? So enantiomers basically, if you look at my hand in the mirror, okay? So if I look my hand in the mirror, let's say there's a mirror right here, it will look like this, okay? So my hands are enantiomers because this is a mirror image of this. And if I try to put them on top of each other, they don't superimpose, right? They don't fit perfectly. That's why these are called as enantiomers. So they are mirror images of each other, but they're non-superimposable, all right? And what are diastereomers then? So diastereomers are, these are not the mirror images of each other, okay? So like in enantiomers, you have mirror images. These two are not mirror images of each other. So enantiomers and diastereomers, okay? Now again, if you don't remember all these definitions, it's okay, because we actually don't use the concept of mirror images anymore. Instead, we go with what we learned before, okay? So what we learned in this chapter, majority of the things, majority of the time we were spending, uh, time spending to learn R and S, okay? So how can we use R and S configuration to find out enantiomers and diastereomers? Again, stereoisomers is a common term, and these are the two uh, branches, enantiomers and diastereomers, okay, for this, all right? So let's do real examples now and find out the relationship between the two structures. Again, when I say enantiomers, we are comparing the two structures, okay? And when we say diastereomers, then we're also comparing the two structures, okay? So it's a comparison between the two, okay? And then we'll also learn new terms here, a meso compound and what are the identical compounds, all right? So we'll do everything known with the structures, okay? All right, so now what we're trying to do here is we have all these structures and we're trying to find out the relationship between the structures, all right? So now if you look at the connectivity here, right? So we have one, two, right? This is a one, two, this is one, two, and this is a one, two. So the connectivity is the same, all right, in all these structures. What the difference here is the spatial arrangement, right? So this bromine here is above the plane, 
below the plane, okay? Below the plane, above the plane, all right? Now, again, the best way to handle this, okay, if you had to identify the relationship, okay, we, we have spent a lot of time in finding out R and S. So the best way is to assign R and S and then figure it out, okay? So that's the easiest way to do it, all right? So in that case, you can ignore the mirror images and all the, all sorts of things which can be confusing, all right? So here, so we have a staging carbon right here, staging carbon here, so assign R and S. So this should be R, right? And this should be R as well. Okay, so we have R and R, okay? So this one is S and this one is S, okay? So that should be one, two, three, R, one, two, three, S. And this should be one, two, three, S changes to R and this is R changes to S right here. All right, so we have all these R and S configuration, right? So let's compare them, okay? So we are, if we're comparing these two structures, right? So we have R, and S and R and S. So when they're exactly opposite, okay, when they're exactly opposite, they are enantiomers. So these two are enantiomers. Okay. So again, you know, when we're talking about enantiomers or diastereomers, then we're comparing the two structures together. Right? Now if you compare these two structures right here, right? So what we have here is R, so S and R, they're opposite and one is same, right? So if you have one opposite, one same, then these are diastereomers. Okay, so if you have a structure that has three stereogenic carbons, then you're also looking at, if they're exactly opposite, all of them, then they're enantiomers. And if not, if you have one opposite and two same, or two opposite, one same, then they are diastereomers. Okay, you can apply the same logic here. So all opposite enantiomers, one opposite, one same diastereomers, right? And if you compare these two structures right here, so this is, they look different structures, but if you look at the configuration, they are the same. So these two are identical compounds. You call them, uh, there's no difference, they are the same. So these two are identical compounds, right? So again, in antiomers, diastereomers are identical compounds. We compare them as two structures, okay? <clears throat> so then the last one is, what is a meso compound? Okay, so a meso compound is just one by itself. Okay. So our definition of a meso compound is, okay, so let's break it down right here. A meso compound is, Okay, so there are two conditions you're looking at. Okay, so these are compounds should be, should have at least, two stereogenic carbons. You can have more than two, but at least two. And it should also have a plane of symmetry. So it should have a plane of symmetry. All right, so the best example is this right here. So condition number one, do we have two stereogenic carbons here? Yes, this carbon is stereogenic and this carbon is stereogenic. All right, so two, two stereogenic. And do we, do we have a plane of symmetry right here? So yes, the plane of symmetry goes right here. So that's the plane of symmetry because this half is same as this half, right? And in case of meso compound, you're also looking at if there's bromine up, then this has to be up as well because in stereochemistry, up and down means two different things. Okay, so if this is up, this one has to be up, and that is called as a meso compound. Okay, again, meso compound is just one by itself. Okay, and these are two things you're looking at. Okay, two stereogenic carbons and a planar symmetry. And if you have this condition, then that is a meso compound. All right. <clears throat>